Hello, it's Sarah, and I have a project today, guys. It is decorative painting month, and so I decided to try and design my own ATCs. This one, it's just a little scarecrow, but this is really more closely, closer than I wanted to of um, a Renee Mullins piece. So I want to teach you this one that I actually designed myself. Um, just a little pumpkin with a spider and a candy corn. Super simple. And of course I've changed it a little bit, but you're just going to need an ATC, which is, and I'm using this Bristol cardstock, two and a half by three and a half inch piece of paper. All right. It is artist trading card, ATC. Um, I collect these. They're, they're the size that fits in a baseball card sleeve, right? Um, I, all I did was draw out some ideas on my um, sketch pad. I have another one that I'm working on, so maybe I'll do another video for you. But just for today, we're going to work on this little um, pumpkin. And I've tweaked them a little bit. Uh, you're going to need some tracing paper. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get this pattern and link it below. And then you'll be able to click on it. It'll be a PDF and you'll have this little drawing that you can then trace and transfer to a piece of uh, cardstock just the way I'm doing it here. Um, I have prepped this. I did put some all-purpose sealer and I'm using what I have as far as colors go. I wanted to, and I was actually inspired by this little box, this Halloween box, the black and purple. I wanted to use purple. So I chose this, um, where is it? Violet Haze. I don't know. I just thought something different, right? Mix a little bit of the paint and the sealer together and create a barrier on your paper so that the paint doesn't soak into the paper. So I just coated it with that and then I just went back with the straight purple and I left some ridges because I was rushing. Um, and then once that's dry, you're going to transfer your design on to your ATC card. And this time you'll see I made a little, I'll come in, I made a little bit of a border on this one. So I just kind of squoze it in together because I just thought this one kind of needed a border. I'm also going to change the direction of his eyes to be looking at the spider. That's kind of all I'm really going to change. I'm going to stick with what I have. Um, the first thing we're going to do is put some um, shading on the background. And this just helps to kind of ground it. Um, a lot of decorative painters do this in their pieces, and it's usually a first step. I'm going to use a floating technique to do that, and I use an angle brush probably use my half inch. Is this a half inch? Yeah. I got new brushes, you guys, and I just really, really wanted to use them. So this is a half inch angle brush, and that's what I like to float with. You can use a flat. I'm going to take a little touch of this. Uh, this is Payne's Gray, and I'm going to, and I'm going to load it onto my brush on palette paper. And palette paper is kind of like a slick surface, so I can get the paint to move across the bristles using the water that I've also loaded into my brush. And I'm going to go around the piece first, top and bottom, side to side, and create that little frame. This, I'm going to do this quick, I hope, you guys. I did it first and I kind of worked out the bugs so that when I filmed it, I could get it as quick as I can. So I'm not making too long of a video for you because this is just a little fun practice piece. It's on paper. We all have a little piece of paper. You could use mixed media paper. Um, you could use watercolor paper, but just seal it because you're going to want it to be, um, you don't want the paint to absorb into it. I'm going to try and stay in the shot as well. And then I'm going to go up both sides. Um, this is a little bit wet still. While that's drying, I'm going to do on a few other places, like around my pumpkin a little bit. So how about I'm just going to go down some of the, uh, I'm going to go right across my spider because I'm going to base coat him. So I'm going to take it right down to the corner on all of these pieces of 
spider web. I don't really have a light source. I'm just putting it wherever I want it to go. And guys, this is the background. It's not the details. When we get to the details, that's when it's going to be fun. I, I always, always have loved adding the details. Let me go down this side while it's dry. I'm just working around areas until they're dry. Because if I go over it while it's still wet, you can pull off what you put down. And then I need to go down this side too. I just want to let it dry a tiny bit. This looks dry here, so I'm going to go around my pumpkin. Let me just go on the top of them real quick. I'll do right here, sorry. And this is kind of based off my little um, Halloween mandala that I did. I had some spiders and some spider webs in that, and I had a, a pumpkin. So I kind of just took those two. Oh boy, that's Matt. I took those two design. Oh boy, design um, things and stop key. And I combined them to make a little ATC. And it's the same thing I'm going to do with my other one. So see, this is all it is right now not looking too good right but let me take a break and let's base coat in with soft black just so that it can um i'll be able to shade it eventually this is soft black it's kind of like a brownish black but i'll be able to add black or like a lighter color to it and paint and I'm going to use a flat brush, although let me use my round. I got some new brushes, you guys, and it's so awesome to have these in my stash. I can just grab it, and I know I'm going to be... Matthew! I'm filming! Sorry. He's the loudest nose blower that I know. I don't blow my nose loud. Anyway... It's a rainy day in New Jersey, so it's the perfect time for me to do this. And I just, I really didn't want this month to go by without painting with you guys because, um, as most of you know that watch my channel, decorative painting is my first love. I'm going to grab a liner brush and we'll put on his little legs in the same color. Actually, well, I should maybe put the white on first. I think it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. That's what my mom used to say. But like this leg goes over the, you know what, it's all right. I'll put it. Because I want to white, I'm going to do the web white. So, but that's okay. I will wing it. We will wing it. Yeah, my mom always used to say, half of one, six, uh, Six of one, half a dozen of another. I don't know. It means it's the same difference. And then he's holding on to a little candy corn. I thought that was such a cute little addition. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Um, let us do one other thing. While, I might as well get the white out. I'm going to base coat because I realized when I did the other one, it took me so many coats to get that orange to cover. So I am going to base coat both of these, the candy corn, the whole thing in white. And then we'll come back and add yellow and orange on top of that, but it'll cover much better with this as an undercoating, they call this. And it'll actually, even though you think you're adding a step, it'll save you a step. And I'm going to do the pumpkin as well. So the whole pumpkin, believe it or not, it'll save us having to add 15 coats of orange. And I traced this out with white, um, 
I want to say it's graphite. There's graphite and there's um, carbon paper. So they're actually, I don't know how different they are. Carbon and graphite. I think they're very similar. But um, I can see it. So once I get everything painted, you'll be able to see it too. See, you can see that. And then this little part in the back is a part of the pumpkin too. Oops. Right here. And I'm just going to let that dry and we will go on to finish up the outside of the, um, the shading on the background. So let me go back to my Payne's Gray. Gently, Sarah. See, I don't want to rush. I always, always paint much neater when I'm not on camera. Just FYI. So this is not going to be my neatest. Oh, and there was a little boogie in that, or a paint boogie. Could, I think it's probably glitter. Because when I, um, I glittered the other one, so it got... So I'm just putting a little shadow... And then we're going to add white. So you'll see this very brightly. But it's just something to give, to, to set everything down onto the paper. Um, instead of just, and it, it would look fine without it, I think, you know, for a little cute ATC. This is just, I'm kind of telling you the process in a very short, sweet way. This is exactly what you would do if you were doing it on a big piece that was, you know, on a, on a wooden box or something, you know. I'm trying to get up as high as I can with these. And hopefully I'm in the shot because I am not looking at what my camera, okay good, at what my camera sees. I am just focused on what I'm doing. And that is why painting was my serenity for so many years. And guys, it looks messy, but fear not, it will, it'll be great. And plus, I'm zoomed in, so it's, you're not, you know, it's never going to be, look that bad when you look at it. Oh boy. Oh boy. I just went out of lines. I don't like going out of lines that much. I still didn't put the one down this side, so I'll do that. And then we're going to finish base coating. <clears throat> I'm going to show you how you can add other mediums to this art form as well, which is something that I'm, that's the big plus of decorative painting lately. It's evolved, and I think I did a little, uh, I hope I uploaded that video where I did a little history, the decorative painting history from toll painting to decorative painting to I just feel like anything goes now people are using stencils and stamping and um, all the tricks of the trade all right let us while we have that white out we might as well put our um, web on I'm using a liner brush this is an 18 slash zero and I'm going to make the paint a little wetter than it is already. So it just came out of the bottle. And now I've just added a little bit of water with my brush. And I just kind of want it to be like ink. So it flows off the bristles. And this isn't going to be perfect, you guys. I'm going to do my best. Try not to stick my head in the shot. And move the piece so that you can see it. And it's. I'm going to just try and... run this right down that line. Oops, I went crooked at the end. I kind of wanted it to end up in the corner. So I'm going to do another one. It's not quite as wet as I need it to be. It needs to flow off this brush like ink. We are going to add glitter to some of these, so I'm not too 
worried about, um, oh, I don't want to forget this one. He's hanging down from, because sometimes the spider web will glisten. Oops, my hand bumped into something will glisten in the sun and or if it's rained and there's a raindrop on it and it just made me think I could use something I know I have in my stash that I haven't used in forever probably since I've worked with uh, paper crafts doing um, cards and I'm just gonna stroke these in like just start push down pick up Some of them will be fatter than others. I'm not an expert on spider webs, but you know, it'll look enough like a spider web. I've done a stained glass spider web one time. So I just cut the glass into these shapes and then the solder was basically these little loop-de-loos And you just keep echoing. And it starts to look pretty. I'm sure you could probably use a paint pen or a pen, but I messed up on my first little uh, scarecrow. I added pen, because Tracy Moreau does that all the time, and then I varnished on top of it, and my pen smudged so I don't like doing that like I'm not going to do any line work with pen on this one I'm going to use a brush but you're most you're welcome to and I would just varnish it first if you're going to varnish make sure that uh, you do your pen work last and you won't have that issue I tend to rush and I don't think things through in general you know like that looks pretty cool. That looks spider webby. All right, I'm gonna try and put this orange on here, and I really hope this is called spiced pumpkin. I really hope it this works. The white being there. Hopefully, it'll. Um, I'm using a flat. No, no, I'm using a round. This is a number three round brush. And I'm just going to load it with a little, there's just a little bit of water in the brush always because it just helps the paint move. Oh yeah, I think we're going to be good to go. Maybe one more coat of orange and it'll be uh, solid. I usually put the one I'm base coating, this is considered base coating, just filling in the base of the image, you know, getting it to where anyway before you add the shading and highlighting um, I was saying uh, I usually put the paint down in the middle ish and then work my way out to the edge and kind of flatten any ridges as I go I mean that seemed to cover pretty good I'm pretty happy with that so let's do our, um, I have a little bit of yellow. I have straw I'm using for my yellow. I'm using spiced pumpkin for my orange, and then I'll do the top. Let's just go. This goes in the center. It's, you know, I have a, oops, a round brush. And a flat brush works really well too. And you'll get your, you'll figure out your preference. I'm just gonna grab because I did just get some really this tiny little flat. This is a number four flat. Let's see. I'll put the yellow in with that. It's still a little big. I'll have to pull it this way. I think these are um, definitely going to need another coat. Oh man, I went out of lines. Oh, 
I'm going to go back to my um, round because it's just, um, I have a little tip on it that I can poke. So I'll do a little, another coat of white here. So now I'm just going to jump around and base coat things while each of the other ones are drying. I can jump around, but see that's not covering still. It's still super sheer. That that orange is just not a opaque color. It's a pain in the butt when that happens. I mean, I, I'll get there, but it's just taken, taken much longer. I need, um, hopefully this is soft black. I'm just going to go in a little bit more on him. Like he's taking a bite. I'm going to use um, Burnt Sienna. That's my favorite brown. And maybe I will use that little flat um, just to put in this stem. I always turn my piece, you guys. It is just easier than turning my whole body in my hand, you know, to fit where I'm going. And that's going to take a couple coats too. While I have that out, I'm going to just take my liner and make a few little, uh, I don't know if they would be called um, grape vines or something. So just make some squiggly lines down here. Something like that. And then I'll throw a few little leaves. So I'm going to make this have a little connection thing like that. And then go back. I could put it right on top of the pumpkin too, but he's not dry yet. And just make these little curly cues. And I just do that by like putting my brush down and just wiggling. It's super, you know, I mean, it's not dark or anything. It's not meant to be like a focal point. You could, and I could go back with a million different layers of color and highlight and shade. And, you know, it's just, this is just meant to be quick. I'm really trying to get this. So I'm going to go in while this is because my orange is dry. I'm really hoping this is my last coat of orange. It should be. We're going to shade the pumpkin though because you got to give him his little indentions. And I think we're good. I think it looks a little um, a little translucent, but it isn't that bad. Oops. I'm just adding a little more orange. And I'll put a little more yellow. So that's what I like to do when you're base coating. Get a couple things going at once, and you can just jump around so that you're not just wait, you know, you don't just do the pumpkin and then move to your candy corn. Like, just keep it moving. Well, that's what I do because I'm impatient. Um, good enough. Good enough. You could put a word on here. We could put words. Like, I didn't really do anything to the top of this at all. So, you could put words. I did add the glitter, but that was kind of like an afterthought. I need to let that dry a little more. Let me add a little more brown just to get that so it's not see-through on the stem. Let the pumpkin dry. I'm going to grab some green. Let's do a two-tone leaf. Um, I have dark jungle and I'm just going to use the yellow. I'm going to double load. The, oopsie. The leaf, I'm going to do dark jungle on one side of my brush and a little bit of yellow on the other side. And I'll use a filbert. You can use a flat. Um, I just don't want to get it on anything. All right, so here's what a double load is. So I have green. 
I'm going to take my brush and do one side like that. I dipped it in the green, the other side in the yellow. So now I have a little yellow and a little green. That's considered a double load. And it's just to get, I'm going to flip it over and blend it that way. And then I'll do it one more time. Green on one side, yellow on the other. Blend it on my brush, blend it on my brush. And then when I go to the piece, I'm just going to do a sit down. So I'm going to sit the brush. Let's do the highlight at the top. So I'm going to push down, pick up. So I'll put it one over here, push, let's see, I want the highlight at the top. Oops. And maybe that's all I'll have. Maybe I'll put one over here. I could put a little one here too. And I'll put like a stem through it or a, I mean a, um, a little uh, vein in the leaf in a sec. All right, I'm going to shade my little spider. Let me see. I'm just going to do another brush mix, but this time we're going to do it for a float. So I'm just going to take the black that I base coated them with, which is soft black. I, need, I think I need a little more white out. Oh, I see it. Actually, is this dry? Yeah, that's dry. I was painting this morning when I did the other one. And, all right, so I'm going to take the same color that I just painted them with, so the soft black, and I corner loaded it, and this time I'm putting it down. Just put some down on my palette paper. Then I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white and put it right on top of that, and now I'm mixing and I'm making a gray. I'm going to rinse my brush off completely. Rinse my brush off, blot the water out, and come over and pick this up, what I just made. And now I've got a little bit of gray. I'm just going to float gently. I don't want too much, and you know me, I'm a heavy hand. Oh, it's too dark already. Looks fine. I could take my mop and just gently mop a little, like pull it a little, and it'll soften it and kind of pull it across. That looks good. So he's done, and you can add a face. I think I added a face on my other one. And then for the, I'm gonna kind of, let me make sure this is dry. I'm gonna use this color called Candy Bar Brown. It's like a reddish brown to shade the pumpkin with. And it is um, dark enough that we're gonna be able to see, and I'm just looking for, uh, I don't know. I just something. Oh, my drying thing. This. I was just going to hit it with my heat tool because I just want to make sure that's. All right. I'm going to float this. Let me just come back in with my. This is just a pencil so I can see my lines. Here's what you would do if you were doing a big piece. I could lay this right on top of here right over the main shape of it because you can see through it enough to know oh, I'm going to do this so that you can see how I would do it if I were a beginner like I'm just winging it because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to do this all the time I'm going to take this old old piece I hope it's out here oh nuts I should have gotten this ready way before I placed my hand down. It's here. I have it. It's just under all this other stuff. Here it is. This is an old piece, so it doesn't have a lot left to it when it comes to um, graphite. So I'm just going to stick it under because I want this to be really light and just make my little face lines. And also this little, I just want this to be here and here so I know where to connect my shading. It's very light, but that's really how I want it. Let me come in so you can actually see it. I mean, it's super light. 
but I'm going to shade with that chocolate, what did I say, chocolate cherry, candy bar, brown, and create the little um, indents of the pumpkin. So I'm going to do it here. I'm going to go and follow this around to here and just tuck it in there and do the same thing on the other side. Starting here. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Yay. And all of your bristles have to be on the surface so that you get the water and paint. So does that look really? Yes, that is wrong. Hold on. I went I went to the wrong place up here. I'm just taking it off. Do you see how easily I did that? If it's still wet, you just take it off. I'm going to start at the other side and go down. I want it to come from here. Right? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I don't. I want it to start from here. Can't really see my line. My brush split. But that's okay. You know why it looks wonky to me? Because there's two little places back here that are separate. So if I show you that on my tracing, you'll see what I mean. See these little places right here? That's why I got screwed up over that. So it definitely looks a little wonky, but that's okay. Do you know pumpkins are not, they're not perfect. They're not perfectly shaped. I think I want to put a little bit on his chin just to give, maybe I should do it actually at top and bottom. I think I did that on my other one. Let me look. Now that everything is all thrown all over the place. Um, I did, but I don't know. I think I want to just put it here. All right. With black, now this is straight black, not uh, the, the soft black. Not the soft black, Sarah. The regular black. Oh, you know where else I want to use that same? Wait a minute. Let's shade the little, um, with the cherry, the black cherry. What did it, is it called? Candy bar. Jeez. That same brownish red. I'm just going to fill, put a little bit at the bottom of the stem. Can't really see it, but we know it's there. I think I'll do this with my liner just so I can get really those details. Now, I designed this after these little pumpkins. Let me go up. Remember these? That I. This is my wood burning mandala. And this is the other ATC I'm working on. I want to do a little haunted house. And here's the spider web. So this is kind of what inspired me to do it. I just worked from what I'd already done and just kind of included them together. So look, he's got a smiley face and he's got a sad face. So all you have to do to make a smiley face or a sad face is you just start with it facing up if you want a smiley face and start with it facing down if you want a sad face. Did I say that right? I might have said both. Anyway, so I'm just taking a liner. I could use something a little less. No, I'm going to use this. But like this is a, a, a 10 slash 0 liner. I'm going to use this. It's like got a little bit of a shorter bristle. And I'm going into that black. Oh, wait, no. I want to do, I'm going to do my nose and my mouth with black, but I'm going to do the eyes with white, and I'll show you why. And you can make them a little wider, because this is a cutout, right? And then I'm going to put white in the middle of the eyes so that he can have eyeballs. Because I just think he looks cute with eyeballs. So I'm just going to paint these in white and then we'll outline them. Oh my gosh. I can't even follow my own. They just grow on you no matter what you do. You try to keep them even. 
that looks good. Let's put a little stem or a vein line on our uh, leaves. Just make it go like it's connected. Cute. Oh, one here. So that was quick, right? There's a couple things I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go around it with black. Let me go back with the white real quick. Um, all right, while that's drying, I'm going to line that, the whole thing with black. So the very black black, not the um, Payne's Gray. And just go, kind of skip a line along the edge. And you could use, uh, that wasn't black, you could use gold. I think gold would look super pretty. Um, I just have to be quiet when I do that for some reason. It's just easier. When you do line work, you just have to make sure you have enough water and, oops, I went over the leaf. I don't want to draw on the leaf. Enough water and paint in the, in the brush. So you make a little brush mix of paint and water and I'm just kind of skipping this line along the bottom. So that kind of filled it in a little or it made it look more framed in. And then we're going to take that black and I'm going to outline his eyes. They're still a little wet. Put a little shade on the candy corn too. I forgot about that. Just a little bit of the, um, let's just use burnt sienna. So the color that I used for the trunk, not the shading color. I think that candy bar is a little too dark. I just want it to be a little bit on the bottom part of it. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Right here, just to give it a little, I don't know. And then, like I don't want it too much on the white. I should have used my mop. And then I'm going to make a, a line with white. Uh, just right here. It's a little thick. My brush was, was a little watery. And what else? I see. We're done pretty much. I'm going to do that... Um, glitter part, but I just wanted to make sure my web looked decent, all connected. And you can add high, there's so much more you can do. It's not, you know, that's a thing you can shade and highlight and keep going and I could put little eyes on my spider. I can't help it. Just a little, like, Maybe I have to put a black dot there. All right, I have a stylus, and I'm going to go into black, and I hope this looks good. I think, yeah, I think this is a good size, and I'm just going to dot it. It looks a little wet right here. So these looking up at the spider. I mean... I think that's cute. I could go a little bigger, um, but I don't really think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it. I think going bigger would have been cute, though, to fill in a little bit more, but that looks great. And I'm going to put a little bit of a black on the...
I don't know. I think, you know what I think I should have done is made the, his eyes black with a dip dot. So I'm going to do that. I have a tiny little, um, my stylus, my littlest stylus, and I'm just going to do two black dots so that they're not, actually they could have been red, but you can see them. I like it. Okay. And you could put highlights and little, like, how about this? Maybe some of that chocolate cherry, just a little bit of line stuff like that, something like that. Um, even little lines like this. Eh, didn't need it. But, you know, you can go crazy. You could put a little bit of uh, yellow. It's fine. It's done. All right. So let me um, go away and come back because I want to let make sure this is all dry and nothing's going to stick to the glit like the glitter isn't going to stick to anything else. So I'll be right back and we'll do the glitter. All right, we're back for the last little step, and it's because I have this cool pen, you guys. It's called Pinpoint Roller. It's by Sakura. Gotta love Sakura. Sakura makes such so many cool things. It's quickie glue. It's a glue that comes out of a pen point. So what I did in this glitter, it's just a fine glitter. Um, I put it on here to kind of give the uh, web a little shine. I varnished. So we'll see how this is going to stick, but I also use like a glittery varnish. This stuff here, Star Sparkle Varnish, Starlight Varnish by Americana. You got to shake it real good, but it gives you a little bit of glitter in there. And then I'm going to take my glue and let's just line like hit or miss. I'm going to skip around a little and not put it everywhere. I want, whoop, I want it on there. Uh, so I'm literally just drawing glue onto a line. Isn't that so freaking cool? I don't want to do every one of them, so I'm skipping some. All right, let's go. Let's see what happens. And this is by, I don't know, PK Glitz. I got this a long time ago at a scrapbooking store. Um, I never use it, so hello, I'm using it. It's called Glitter Pearls, too. So I'd rather use something like holographic, like with a little bit of, uh, uh-oh. I think it's sticking to the uh, varnish. It wasn't dry yet. Oh, man. You know, it's always something with me. See how when I'm impatient? Oops, let me turn this around. I'll be able to get it off with a brush. Don't worry. Um... Oh my goodness, Sarah. So I really don't want it to stick everywhere. I don't want it all throughout here. I don't really know where I put it. Oh. Oops. You can see on some of the I have to go in with a bit smaller brush yeah it's just a little bit um, stickier than it would be if it was dry for like a while you know but it's not sticking I'll probably be able to wipe it off much better when um, the glue part is dry But I love it. Anything, this is just another part of the decorative painting um, evolution that I am so there for. I love adding all this other glitz and glam and media and stickles and, you know, that really attracted me when I was doing um, ATCs. Like, I, I use glossy accents and 
anything I can. Stickles, my gold leafing pen is another favorite. Uh, I just ordered two new ones of those from Amazon. But you get the drift. So cool. I love it. I love it. It adds dimension. He's so cute. Look, I wanted to show you the difference. This one, he looks like he's looking over here like he's nervous. And this one, he's just looking right at the spider. Anyway, I hope that was fun, you guys. Oops. I'm going to try, like I said, and come up with a pattern and put it in the description box below so that you can go and get the PDF and uh, you'll have the pattern. If not, you can try drawing it yourself. It's not that hard. Just start on, start on a... Uh, a piece of scrap paper and then when you like it like draw yourself out a little two and a half by three and a half inch card shape and then when you like it trace it out and then trace it onto your card you can do it I love it I'm very happy with this one all right you guys thanks for watching